right. All right, folks. <laughs> Said his purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace. There was an upside down you, and there was a right side up you. And when you got inverted, your other eye and your eyes became single. You became one in Christ. Um, I'm going to use the scriptures tonight to destroy, destroy any myth of the enemy about who Jesus is and, and the understanding of his name and who we are. You have to understand who you are. The Bible says your identity, your identity is hidden in Christ. Okay, so let me show you how clear the Bible is about some things that maybe uh, some people have been confused about. But this is this is how the Lord poured the scriptures through me. He he took me for the beginning of uh, my walk with him in 2002. And I, I literally got up at five in the morning, read the Bible before I went to work, prayed before I, I'd even go to work at seven o'clock just constantly devouring the word. He just had me on a, he just trained me. And then after a decade of that, and then pouring the supernatural stuff into the, you know, the, the ability to see and all these things, then he started showing me how to discern and understand completely the word. He, if anyone saw the old minute, you know, ministry on YouTube, you saw the unrolled scroll. And that's what he delivered to me was, the unrolled scroll. And the reason I'm doing that is it goes up and down at the same time. When you unroll a scroll in the old days, it would go up and down as you unrolled it. Anyway, so I'm going to show you biblical truths that are just going to, they're going to smoke your brains tonight. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. All glory to God. And anyway, again, I want to kind of touch on something because I've, I've, uh, I've run into this uh, not once, not twice, but many, many times. Um, a lot of people think that because I teach you and I show you, this is how the Lord communicated uh, these biblical understandings to me, that everyone's supposed to be able just to do it. That is totally not correct. My ability to discern the scriptures is a supernatural spiritual gift. And a lot of people fall into serious error because they think, oh, well, look, I'll just go look up the Strong's Concordance word for this. I was trained for a decade just in the regular scriptures, just reading, listening. Um, and then once the Lord had infused all this supernatural ability in me, then he began to teach me, I want you to read the scriptures now on the fly translating to Hebrew and Greek. And I actually complained, <laughs> just to be honest. I was like, you want me to what? Why? That's not fair. <laughs> A little did I know it'd be the greatest blessing of my life. Anyway, but please, I, I, I have friends and people close to me that have thought, oh, well, I'm supposed to break down all these words. And it's like, no, no, it's okay to come here and learn and see and and go and check it out for yourself yes that's fine but to think you're supposed to do what i do and teach the word no the bible says not many should be teachers will be held to a very high standard of judgment <laughs> very high and i've watched good friends of mine just go off the rails several times uh, on several accounts so please just a word of warning okay just it's a supernatural gift it's a gift and so yeah if you go read first corinthians 12 you'll understand and the lord has allowed me to function very highly in some of his his gifts and that's all and so anyway okay y'all ready his purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace. Jesus said, if your eye be single, your whole body's full of light. The reason I do this is to show you that there's an eye that's up. There's an eye that's down. One is controlled by the pit. One is controlled by heaven. And you're caught in that system within your consciousness. You have two opposing energies. That's what runs the flesh. And when you get converted, your eyes become single. They're full of light. 
one's one's up, one's down. The one that's up is light. The one that's down is dark. When the one that's down and that's dark gets converted, your eyes become single and your whole body is full of light, not light and darkness. It's full of light. And then you know you've been converted. In the, in the Bible, it says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And the Bible in John, I believe it's uh, 17. Um, it says... Here and this is life eternal. This is very important, so listen. And I'm just going off the top of my head, but we're gonna go over these scriptures. And this is life eternal. And this is life eternal. I bet you're going like what? I did that on purpose because that's a pretty important statement, right? If in the Bible, Jesus himself is saying, and this is life eternal. That's pretty important. So we're going to get to that. And I'm going to show you the absolute identity of Christ. Because if you don't know Jesus and you don't know who he is, and you've been following the mainstream churches, they are set up to deceive people. Okay, ready? Let me show you how to get to some of the most valuable information in the world. Right here. This is my special projects folder that Dave the Wave and a few other people have helped produce. Um, I'll put the link towards, uh, this is the end right here. I'll put that link, show note information, so you can access it. Tonight, we're going to be working out a special projects too. This is my most recent folder. It's called Testimonies and Healings. In here, you'll find testimonies about people that uh, the Lord has allowed me to lay hands on. And they gave their own personal testimony. Juan was blind in one eye. It's it's on YouTube right here. Uh, George he had some kind of a he had some kind of a I don't know they call it like some schizoid thing where he would thought it was like ants were on his head and he would start shaking he would just pass out he used to pass out all the time uh, it happened in his car going off the roads it happened in restaurants uh, I I witnessed it many times I had to hold him while he would just start shaking it it was horrible and one day the lord allowed me to lay hands on george i would i prayed and i said lord please let me please give me the opportunity to lay hands on george i don't just lay hands on people by the way if i you know like george when he's all shaken i didn't just say oh i'm going to lay hands on you it's not my choice there are many times that george would pass out and i would just sit there and hold him and just pray but laying hands on is different. It's not the same. Anyway, so one day when I was coming home to my house, George was in the car with me. He used to do some construction work with me. And he said, Johnny, it's happening. And he would he would give me a heads up. And so I put my arm across him, you know, to hold him. So when I was putting on the brakes to my driveway, you know, he didn't pass out and his face smacked the dash or something like that. So anyway, so... uh. He said, Johnny, it's happening because he, he'd get a sensation of like ants on his head. And so anyway, I put my arm across him. I pulled into the driveway. And then all of a sudden, right then and there, the Lord told me, lay hands on George. And I was like, oh, wow, I get to lay hands on George. Little did I know. <laughs> I, I reached over and I laid hands on him. And I prayed and I, I prayed to, you know, uh, get rid of his affliction. And I felt just the surge of energy through my arms into my hands and it slammed me back on my seat. I mean, I hit my seat just like, and I couldn't even move. I was stunned. I laid there like this and, and cause I, I can't even explain it. Just, it drained me. And I, I just was laying there and I, all I could do is roll my head sideways and look at George like, uh, and he was over there and he was going, <laughs> he was like up in my face, just, he, he, his eyes were that, and I, and so I had just rolled and looked at him and tears, tears were just coming out of my eyes. I wasn't crying, but water was just running down my face out of my eyes right after I laid hands on him. Anyway, and I was just laying there like, oh, like someone had just pounded me. 
And I looked over at him, and he was like, oh, and he was like, oh, I didn't pass out. Oh, my gosh. He jumped out of the car. He was jumping around, calling his wife, Manny, Manny. He freaked out. Anyway, so I freaked out. But, uh, yeah, it was a wild testimony. Anyway, so George's testimony is there. Uh, Alexi, Karen Sullivan, you know. Anyway, so there's just some there's some cool links in here. Uh, uh, here's here's a cool link. It's proof to the article that when I was in Grand Junction, I told y'all I was waiting in that line to go on Highway 50, and a a big rock fell and crushed one of these guys. And uh, I that was part of my testimony from Grand Junction when I went to go get the containers, as I was waiting in that line. Um, they were only letting a few cars through anyway. And as I was waiting in that line right there, right, right where you're looking right here, a big boulder rolled off and crushed this guy. And then it, it, it closed highway 50. So it, it closed it down. Um, so anyway, what was really weird about that whole thing is in, um, a, a day before a, a couple of days before, maybe, um, I was, I was, in um farmington new mexico on my way there to pick up the containers and the hotel i was at had this had this little brochure it said feet of clay uh, a member owned art out it was for an art gallery and i looked at the t you see the, the letter t right there it's a double cross and that's used by satanists all the time to mock us so it's a double cross and i saw it and the lord had me photograph the feet of clay right there at the hotel. Look, you can tell right here. See the hotel right there. You can see the little brochure right there. Feet of clay. I looked over and the Lord told me to document it, the feet of clay. And then I drove to Grand Junction, got the containers ready. I was leaving on highway 50 It's parked in the mountains, getting ready to go on that pass. And a giant rock fell out and crushed a guy. Now, now, I don't know if you understand just how insane that is, but being the harbinger that's telling you that Jesus is coming and the end of the world is coming on that same trip, you know that there was Jesus blowing the shofar as I looked off the highway. But just go watch the other testimonies. And the shofar, shofar, and shofar, right? Three, Jesus blowing the shofar, stop in Albuquerque, New Mexico, shofar at the meeting on the table chosen to proclaim and i got to the containers and there's a shofar in the bible and it's open to revelation i'm the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end okay then we take the con i take the containers and the truck's following me and we're on highway 50. don't forget i've just recently encountered feet of clay the lord told me to document it there it is there's proof the lord told me photograph that brochure feet of clay so i did feet of clay then i'm sitting in the line a couple days later and a boulder crushes a guy and the guy's name happens to be like dominant ruler who's the dominant ruler of this earth right now satan satan is ruling things it's his party end of the world satanic party that's what's going on that means dominant ruler that was the name Ricardo, the guy that got crushed. But I didn't know the name of the guy until after the uh, until, until after the incident had happened, and it was published in the Gunnison Times. But that's proof right there. So I'm going to show you proof. There's me on Highway 50 waiting to go in right there. There you can see the orange little guard shack right there, right there. That's just waiting to get into the pass. And I documented it that day. I w I'd already seen the feet of clay. And then right up in front of me, a guy gets crushed. And Dan the Lord just tells me Daniel 2.43. And in my spirit, I heard Daniel 2. And in Daniel 2... And as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, that's the feet of clay right there, see? And the toes and the feet were part of iron and part of clay, feet of clay. See it right there? Remember, I just showed you feet of clay. So let me just show you that. So see, there's the feet of clay brochure I photographed a couple days before I was stopped in traffic on Highway 50. The Lord told me, document everything. 
and then a boulder falls and totally crushes a guy. And here, and then I hear the Lord tell me Daniel 2, and the toes and, and the feet were part of iron and part of clay, the feet of clay. So the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, here it is, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Okay, let me tell you something. How many times have I shown you the male and female reproductive system inside of a serpent building called the Vatican? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. So the serpent race mingle themselves together with the Adamic race. So there's the serpent race and the Adamic race. So it's a serpent and a sheep race mixed together. Okay, and now watch this. Watch it play out now. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave to one another, even as iron is not mixed with miry clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Okay, now, right now, I'm going to give you, pay attention, because me in that line is a manifestation of the Lord saying that time has come. This was written in Daniel's day. But now Daniel's day has arrived, and I'm the harbinger that was waiting in line to see it. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these other kingdoms. For as much as thou sawest the stone that was cut out of the mountain without ends, that's Jesus, that stone is Jesus, the stone, the rock. And it break in pieces the iron, the brass, and the gold, and the silver. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation of is sure. So, again, I'll say it again. The rock that was cut out of the quarry without hands, which is Jesus. So, back in Daniel's day, he's receiving a message from the Lord God. And the Lord God tells him, hey, whereas you saw the iron mixed with miry clay, the feet of clay... When that happens, that's they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. So that's what's going on in our time right now. They mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not bound together. And in the days of those kings shall the great God of heaven set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. That's the coming kingdom of Jesus by the rock that was hewn from the quarry without an end. And that rock shall crush all the other kingdoms. And I'm in a line on Highway 50, and I'm in a search and rescue vehicle. It says search and rescue on the vehicle. And Highway 50, a guy named Ricardo Batista gets crushed by a rock, just like Daniel 12. And it crushes a guy named Ricardo, and Ricardo just happens to mean dominant ruler. So the... A physical representation with me as a harbinger manifested right in front of me. The rock crushed the dominant ruler. Highway 50 was closed. 50 means to be willfully ignorant and it means my God is rescue. I want you to just think about those data points right there. And then I'm going to show you scripture tonight that will destroy Satan's kingdom. I mean for good. He will not be able to hide who and what he is. Not when I'm done tonight. And anyone that has any truth living in them will see the simplicity and the obviousness of what the Lord God's revealed to me. So here you go. So here you go. So for as thou sawest the, the stone, the rock that was cut out of the mountain without hands, it shall crush all these other kingdoms. Okay, let's go back to the, let's go back to this. So see, I saw the feet of clay way before I was in line. So let me go up here on my trip. So I'm going backwards on my trip. So here I was in that hotel lobby the day before I got to Grand Junction. There's the yellow pamphlet. The Lord said, photograph it. It had a double cross on it representing the two, you know, the reason it's got a double cross right there, the two lines on the cross, is because it represents the two different races that's what the two crosses are all about. So I photographed it. Then I end up in Grand Junction. I get the containers. I'm waiting in line to get out of there. I'm waiting in line to get through the highways. Here's me loading up the containers right here. Now I'm in the line on Highway 50. And the guy gets crushed. So I, 
I took the feet of clay brochure and I put it right here because the Lord told me Daniel 2. And then not till I went to uh, the ark this weekend did I find out the meaning of the guy's name. Gunnison Times, here we go. It said, man killed on Highway Highway 50, a rock killed construction worker on Highway 50, uh, Ricardo, and I'll just type in the meaning of Ricardo so you can see it. Meaning of name Ricardo, it means... It means hard ruler, hard king, or dominant ruler. So, okay, so there you go. Ricardo, dominant ruler right there. And then also, it means hard or king. I'm sorry, just press the same thing. Hang on one sec. Give me just a moment. Yeah, sorry about that. So Germanic king ruler, hardus, hard, hard ruler, dominant ruler. And remember, I was just taking a container from its spot in Grand Junction that had the black king laying down on a chessboard uh, back to back with the queen. Remember the little magnetic thing that stuck them together? I mean, just impossible, guys. Okay, so I want you to kind of keep that in your brain while we're going over all the scripture now. Okay, I'm giving you the scriptures because the scripture that I'm going to give you tonight will slam the door in Satan's face now, okay? So I'm going to give it to you in a very definite order. Okay, back in the Old Testament, they knew the Messiah was coming. They had had prophets, you know, uh, from the beginning, even from the time of Moses, when Moses came to deliver the people out of bondage, it was, you know, a foreshadowing of the coming of Christ and that he would be coming to deliver his people out of bondage. And who did they get delivered from? The Egyptians. Let me tell you something. You're really living in ancient Egypt. You just couldn't see it. I'll prove it. Everything I say, I tell you, I'll prove it. Okay. So anyway, it's just one hell of an illusion. It's amazing. It's just mind-boggling. Anyway, okay, so the coming of the Messiah was all through the Old Testament. It's really phenomenal that the Jews of today didn't even recognize their own Messiah. But in Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 7, okay. So let me go to Isaiah chapter 7. Here we go. Okay, Isaiah chapter 7. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name. I want you to look how I, how I highlighted his name. I want you to look at it. I'm going to take it slow tonight. I want you to read it. I want you to look directly at it. Say the part in yellow, Imanu. And then I highlighted E-L blue. Okay, so let's click on that. So it even gives you the pronunciation. Imanu, Ale. See it? And here it is written, Imanu. And I, I, I showed you the color. I, I did E-L in blue. Because E-L is its own separate word. That's why I did it in blue. E-L is its own separate word. And once you learn that, and once you understand that about the Hebrew language, it'll really open your mind. Like Daniel, okay, in the book of Daniel. Daniel, see it ends in E-L, Daniel, Daniel it's D-A-N-I-E-L, Daniel. And that means, Dani means judge of. And then E-L is El, the Almighty God, Hebrew word 410. Okay, the the Archangel Michael, it's Mika-El. So Mika means who is like, and then E-L, the Almighty God, 
Hebrew word 410, El, the Almighty God. So that's the way El works in the Hebrew language at the end of sentence, uh, at the end of a word. So Imanu means with us is, and then El, El, the Almighty God, because El is the Almighty God from heaven that rules over all things all the time, never stops ruling everything all the time. Now we're going to be in a system called the earth. Okay. So the earth is a system. It's separate from the heavens. There's different levels of heaven, by the way, but we don't need to get into all that tonight. But the, the God that rules everything from heaven is El, the almighty God. Okay, and you're going to see that made manifest during this presentation. Okay, so therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You shall call his name Emmanuel. So everybody knows Emmanuel is, Emmanuel is the name of uh, with us is El. It's not God is with us. That's incorrect. It means with us is, Imanu, with us is, and then God is. See right here, God. Okay, so let's break it down into its constituent parts. See, Imanu right there, that comes from Hebrew word 5973. It means in conjunction with. So if you, if you want to look at the expanded version of that word, it means in con that is in conjunction with and different applications accompanying see right here accompanying among or between okay so that's what imanu means and then this part right here el that's i color coded it el el is hebrew word 410 so i'll hover over that and then okay see el so l is the almighty see right here the almighty and it's shortened from hebrew word 352 and when you go to it means properly strength anything strong specifically a chief politically a ram so right there you see that l is from ayil and he is the head of all the gods what's a chief politically the number one guy in charge of all politics all politics is the number one guy is emmanuel Okay, and it means with us is El. So who's the almighty God from heaven? What's well, L? Okay, so let's go to another scripture to prove that. Let's go to Isaiah 14. So we'll go to Isaiah 14. There we go. So Jesus is with us is El, the almighty God. So here in Isaiah 14, hang on one sec. All right, so here we go in Isaiah 14, uh, verse 12. We're talking about Lucifer. It says it right there, so you, it's very easy to figure things out. How art thou fallen from heaven? Now, I want to show you the word fallen. It's nafal. Now, listen, you know the, the, the nephilim, nafal, nephilim, fallen Im, fallen ones. So in Hebrew, when you see I am at the end of a like a word, it can make it plural. Nephal im, the fallen ones. Nephal means to fall. Nephal im means fallen im ones. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that before we go. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? which didst weaken the nations. That's Isaiah 12. I mean, I'm sorry, 14, 12. Okay, now watch very closely. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, Shamaim. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I'm going to highlight the word stars because it's not what most people think. Above the stars, and I'm going to highlight the word God here in a very specific blue color. And every time I see the same word in Hebrew for God, I'm going to do it bright blue. Okay, so Lucifer has said, I'm going to ascend into heaven. I'm going to exalt my throne above the stars of God. Well, look at the word God right here. 
So I'm going to click on that. It's L, the Almighty God. So right here, you know for sure, no matter what, that Lucifer said, I'm going to exalt my throne above the stars of L. It says it right there, Hebrew word 410, L, no matter what. So Lucifer wants to get into heaven above the stars of God. But let me show you what, let me show you what the word stars is. It's It really means in the sense of rolling or the sense of blazing. Well, we know that also that God's uh, angels are messengers of flaming fire. And it means figuratively a prince. There it is. So the stars of God, I will exalt my throne above the princes of El, the Almighty God, because God's angels are messengers of flaming fire, like seraphim, seraphim, fiery ones, seraphim, im, fiery ones. Okay, so I'm trying to give you guys the education that the Lord God's given me. And I want you to understand, again, please don't take what I show you and think you're a teacher. Don't do it. The Lord trained me over 20 years to, to give this to me. as a, It's a gift. So anyway, so I, like I said, I've seen people completely go off the rails thinking that, that that's, you know, that that's uh, something they should be doing. And it's not. Okay, so anyway, let's keep going. All right, so here we know Isaiah 14. Verse 12, there's Lucifer saying, you know, uh, how he's been cut down. Uh, there's the Lord saying how he's been cut down. And then he says that you said in your heart, you will ascend into heaven. I will arise. I will exalt my throne above the stars of El, the Almighty God. The Almighty God. Okay, so now let me show you probably some of the most valuable information in the entire world right here. Let me show you. And I added to this folder right here, the Lord gave all this to me in the past 24 hours, how to organize this information for you. And so I put all right here. This is uh, this one folder, special projects, testimonies and healings. And I'm going to go through this whole page tonight. But right here, all these scriptures right here, they I, I, I documented all these scriptures right here. So they're all, all part of a record that someone could go to and get them. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you Jesus in the Old Testament. I'm gonna show you what they did was they can they the enemy's trying to conceal the identity of Jesus throughout the Old Testament, uh, like the churches and all those guys. So let me show you just so clearly. So first of all, before we continue, who is who is Emmanuel? What does it mean? Emmanu with us is L, the Almighty God. Who's who's the Almighty God? L, the Almighty God, because Jesus is with us is L, the Almighty God. So if you want to get saved and, and your goal is you want to be cleansed of your sins and freed of your iniquity and your burden, you have to go to the one that can do it. You can't be going to the wrong one and thinking it's done. That's a pretty darn good trick, isn't it? Okay. Did you know Jesus said, remember at the beginning of this video, what did I say? And this is life eternal. And I said it several times and I didn't finish it. And I'm going to finish it at the end of this video. And this is life eternal. Because, man, that's when you should, you should really know what it says right there. And if you know what it says and you know exactly what it means, then nobody can dupe you. And let me tell you something. I hate a bully. Can't stand bullies. I can't stand them. I used to deal with them when I was younger. And then I became a bully slapper around her. Okay, so here we go. So here we go. So in the in the folder, I so in the same folder right here, I'm gonna I'm gonna go backwards to show you. In that same folder, out of these scriptures, I'm gonna show you right here, in these folders, right here, Isaiah 12. And I'm gonna start with Isaiah 12, and then we're gonna work our way through 
these scriptures and I'll segue back to the beginning and I'll show you all this creepy stuff right here that shows the pits opening and they're getting ready. The the insect the insect army is preparing themselves. And the the way I know that is I can see their language. I read their language fluently now. Very easy for me to see now. Okay, so ready? Here we go. Isaiah twelve, right here. So I'm gonna open it in Esorg. Here we go. Okay, so let's go to Isaiah 12. Behold, God is my salvation. So let's let's highlight that the right color because every time I see Hebrew word 410, it's going to be this bright blue. Behold, L. Everybody say it. L. L is my salvation. Say it right there. Say his real name. L. Say it. L is my salvation. Okay, when you speak other languages, it is so important that you know the word and you speak it out loud. Um, if you don't speak the word out loud, it, something's not right in your brain. You have to say it a few times. L, you have to know what it means. You know, I speak other languages and you have to speak them or it doesn't really mean a thing. So go ahead and say their language. Let's say the name of the Almighty God. So L, L, L. Okay, L is my salvation. Let's look at the word salvation right here. See, a lot of people think, oh, I've seen, I've seen very foolish channels. Oh, you have to call him Yeshua. They don't even know what Yeshua means. Do you know what Yeshua means? Yeshua means saved. Something saved. Here's the meaning of Yeshua. To, let's see. It. it means saved. Something saved. That is deliverance, victory, prosperity, deliverance, health, helping, salvation, welfare. So I want you to look, say it out loud. Yeshua. See, that's not, that is not a name. That is a word that means save, something saved, prosperity, deliverance, health, helping, salvation, welfare. So the word Yeshua that people, oh, you got to call him Yeshua. They don't even know it's not even a name. It means something saved. But there is a word that does mean the self-existent eternal Jehovah that saves. That's Yehoshua. It's different. Okay, now watch. Okay, so behold, who is my salvation? Say it out loud. L is my Yeshua. See, look. It says it right here. Behold, L, E L, Hebrew word 410. L is my Yeshua, salvation. Okay, so now you're getting to see who your salvation is. L from heaven is your Yeshua, your salvation. See, knowing the actual meaning of the words changes everything. Everything. Okay, that's why the enemy hates me so much. Because I was willing to sit down with the Lord and do this and stand up against their threats. Okay, behold, L is my Yeshua. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Yeshua, now let me break this down for you. The Lord, this is a very interesting word for Lord, especially because it's all capital. Because usually, now listen, I'm going to show you right now, following this revelation, usually the word Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, when it's all in capitals, it's usually, it's usually the self-existent eternal Jehovah. That's what it usually is. Here, it actually is different. It means Yah, like Yahweh. Now watch. L is my Yeshua. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord, look, the Lord... So I'm going to click on 3050. Yah. See right here? Yah. 
Okay, I'm going to color it the same color blue. Yah, and it means Yah, the sacred name Yah, the Lord most vehement. So that's what Yah means. Okay, the Lord, but look, Jehovah. So, see 3068? 3068? 3068? That's the self-existent, eternal Jehovah. The word, the word number, it's from, it's from, uh, root 1961. But look, Jehovah, the, the, the Lord, the Yah, the sacred name of the Lord most vehement, Jehovah, and Jehovah is the self-existent, eternal Jehovah, is my Yeshua. Okay, let me show you how that's going to change your perception of understanding the Bible. And the reason I'm showing you altars that are insects, harvesting semen, for goodness sake, and the mouth of a snake being a vagina and a penis, for goodness sake, why? Well, I'm going to show you. Because the Lord showed me the scriptures and what they actually mean. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. Okay, so you saw it for yourself L is my Yeshua. Say it. L is my salvation, Yeshua. And I will not be afraid. The Lord, the Yah, Yehovah, is my Yeshua. Okay, now let's go to, let's go to Genesis 2, where the Lord God forms his version of man. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So the Lord God. See, I told you that the word Lord, when it's all capital, it's the self-existent eternal Jehovah. That's why it was very interesting back there in Isaiah that it was, all right, was I in Isaiah or was I in the Psalms? I think as in Isaiah 12 too. The Lord right here, see, when you see the word Lord, it's the self-existing eternal Jehovah. And then right here, you see the word Elohim because it's a generic name for God and it can mean God's, uh, it ends in I am. Like Nephilim, the fallen Nephil, the fallen Im ones. And then El, the word God right here, is also Im. Let's go to Genesis 1 now. So right here, the Lord God, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, is putting an eternal soul into a man. That's what he's doing right here. He's breathing into Adam, his representation of man in the system. He's breathing into his nostrils the breath of life, and man becomes a living soul. Okay, that's not what happens in Genesis 1. Let me show you. Who's the Almighty God? The one that lives in heaven. The one that sent Jesus, which is Emmanuel. With us is El. So El is the one that resides in heaven. Never, never has to leave heaven. But his spirit comes in and does work within the earth in the formation of all things. Now watch. Genesis 1. And God said, let us make man in our image. I'm going to make this bright green because I'm going to make all these things bright green that go with this concept. Uh oh, let me go back. Here we go. Okay, okay, there we go. So Elohim said, let us make man in our image. Let's click on the word God. Elohim. Does that say El? Does that say L, yes or no? Does that say L? Is that Hebrew word 410? It's yes or no. Is that word Hebrew word 410, yes or no? No, I'm coloring it green because it's not. It's a different word for God. It's Elohim and it's plural. That's why it says God's right there that ends in S. I'll put it in yellow. God's magistrates right there ends in S. Angels right there. Ends in S, angel, gods, angels, and magistrates that are of the supreme God. So see, the churches that taught everybody 
when God made man in his image like it's some wonderful great thing is no. We have to be formed into his image. Well, now get ready for some mind blowing concepts. Okay, so here we go. So, so Elohim created man in his own image. Now let's let's look at the word image. I'm going to color this the same green color in his own image. Okay, say this word out loud. It's spelled T S L E M. That's kind of unusual. It's not an English way of spelling things, but it's pronounced Selem. Selem. And what's the first meaning of the word Selem? To shade, right there. And then the next part of the definition is a phantom. That is, comma, figuratively an illusion. So let's let's do that next. We'll do that light green. And then resemblance, hence a representative figure, especially an idol. So, and then it says vain show, which means like a poser. Vain show is someone that's like a poser. Like they act like they're a punk rocker, but they're not a punk rocker. They just dress up. Okay, so anyway, so Elohim created man in his own Selem, a phantom figuratively an illusion resemblance hence a representative figure especially an idol so y'all know right there that y'all know that the lord god doesn't make idols right see the whole human race was an idol that was made from elohim that was the serpent race that was things getting started and the lord showed me in, in the channel that was taken down Parthenogenesis is the way it was done. A reptilian race can self-fertilize. They can start with a female. That female can actually self-fertilize, and then they make more, and then they can transgender. What do you think all this transgender stuff is here in the end of the world? It's just a manifestation of the original race. That's all it is. The original race was able to start with the female. That female was able to self-fertilize and then they can change their gender. Uh, go look up whiptail lizards. Go look up parthenogenesis. Just go do it. Komodo dragons do it. They can have a they can have a baby. That baby can switch from a female to a male. Start mating with the females. That's what a reptilian race can do. Isn't that interesting here in the end of the world? It's all this transgender ben, gender bender insanity mm. now you know why well who started it then oh it's a manifestation of the one that started it there you go okay now watch so elohim created man in his own vein shell phantom image resemblance since a representative figure especially an idol okay now okay so now we're going to go to psalm 82 okay now uh, I'm just going to kind of walk it down to uh, verse 5. They know not. Who is they? Huh? They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said ye are gods. Right there. So. I have said ye are gods. Let's click on the word gods. Elohim. Okay, but here it's little g. Because if it shows up at one time, like when the formation process, a cumulative sum of many gods is many in one. It's still Elohim. God, uh, think of, let's, let's do it like this. Picture a ball of light right here, a ball of light. Okay, well, Within that ball of light, there was an apostasy and a group picture a, a million light particles decide to leave this ball of light to go do their own thing. But it's many in one. Think of that as Elohim. Okay, so they leave the original source uh, like Lucifer. Thou hast set thine heart as the heart of Elohim. This is Ezekiel 28. Now I said, I am L, that you are not L. So Lucifer said his heart is the heart of Elohim. So think of a bunch of Elohim gods. Then they leave in one group, many in one. Okay, now pay attention. I have said ye are gods. What's the word? Elohim. 
and all of you are children of the most high. This is pretty important right here. So let's do this in the blue. See that L? That's L. And then yon on high, lofty, uppermost, right there. You see it? L yon. El yon. You're you're all Elohim and you're all children of El Yon, the most high God, the supreme God. Okay, you're all children of the most high. But you shall die like men. Look at that. Hebrew word 120. I'm going to change this to. I'm going to change it to yellow. You shall die like men. Hebrew word 120. That's from Genesis 1. When Elohim says let us make man in our image. So Elohim said let us make man in our image. See the word man? Right here. Hebrew word 120. I have it highlighted all the same colors. Up here, I, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it rust colored though. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image. Now watch. So Elohim created man. Here's Elohim creating darkness within a system. Watch. So Elohim created, watch. Bara, say it. Bara. Elohim created. The word for created is bara. It means to cut down as a formative process. Okay, so Elohim bara Adam and his own Selem. In the image of Elohim created he him. Who's that? That's the one that was kicked out. Male and female created he them. So that's why the altar in the Vatican, let me show you. Okay, so I want you to understand that you know, in the Vatican, this snake wearing a crown. See the snake wearing a crown? In the window that's the mouth of the snake, that is this window right here, male and female created he them. So there's male right on the face of the sheep. So I'll, here's the sheep right here. Wait a minute. Here's the sheep right here. I'll, there's the male reproductive system. I'll put it right on the face of the sheep. Uh, here's the sheep over here. I've just outlined the penis. There is the male reproductive system. Male. Now let's turn the female upside down. Watch. To, to get the female, you just turn the sheep upside down right here. And male and female. Right there. Created he them. And so this isn't just these guys on their face worshiping in front of a dead sheep. What they're actually really truly worshiping, because that's all in the mouth of a serpent, they're worshiping the murder of that sheep, which are made up, that sheep's made up by what? A bunch of angels, representing the angels that exercise their free will to come into the system and take on host bodies. That's why there's a penis and a vagina. That's the way you get a host body. Okay, but what you see right here is, you see, you see the big dead sheep and it's a penis and you turn it upside down, it's a vagina. And right here, it's all these angels right here. And those angels are melting into semen, which is exactly what it says in the Bible in Genesis 1, verse 2. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face as the part that turns. Think of turning away. Uh, that turns as the part that turns of the semen. So the spirit of Elohim, let's click on the word Elohim. See the word angels right here? So Elohim, the spirit of all these angels, moved upon the face as the part that turns because they're turning away from the Lord God of the semen. Now, isn't that fascinating? That's exactly what that big dead sheep is. It's a bunch of angels and on the backs of their heads. And I've, I've gone through and I've totally outlined all of it. So here all the angels are melting the face of Elohim. Angels, the spirit of Elohim moved over the 
semen and there's a semen so I just showed you an altar that nobody on this earth has ever shown anyone no one this is what the Lord taught me and that's why I tell people please don't try and teach the scriptures please don't do it please don't think you can go you strongs and do what the Lord's taught me to do he gave me the gift to prove it and he taught me how to read the scriptures and discern it so it's it's a gift again please don't try um, just, you know, look at it for yourself, understand it, but don't go out and start teaching it. You're welcome to show it to others, but don't start doing it on your own. Where, oh, I'm going to break this down. I've watched so many people come off the rails. It's horrible. All right. So anyway, so there it is. So there's the sheep. There's all the cumulative sum of the angels. The spirit of Elohim moved over the semen. There it is. And it's all inside of a serpent. Because the serpent race is what worships the murder of the sheep that took the bait and got carried away captive into Babylon. Because Babylon means mixed race land of confusion. Because when you're a mixed race, it's all confusing until you get converted and your eyes become single, the two become one. Then you can see clearly and you can understand where you're really at. Okay? Okay, now here we go. Let's go back to the scriptures. Let's see, where was I? Okay, let's see. Yep, Genesis 1, I showed you the altar. Okay, back down to, and Elohim created man in his own image. Okay, so there's a serpent race making a host body that has darkness in it. Okay, Genesis 2, when the Lord God forms Adam, that's the Lord creating the light being because he breathes into him the breath of life and man becomes a living soul. Now watch this, because when you read the vocabulary, say the words out loud, follow me, watch. Okay, so Genesis 1, So Elohim created, say this word, bara, created. It means to cut down as a formative process. Created, bara. Elohim created, bara, man, Adam, in his own selem. In the image of Elohim created he him, male and female created he them. That's what I just showed you in that, that big altar, the dead sheep. Now let's go to Isaiah. Forty five. I am the Lord, there is none else. Now see the what's the word Lord? The self existent eternal Jehovah. It's not thirty fifty, it's thirty sixty eight. And that's the self existent eternal Jehovah. And there is none else. There is no God. See the word God? It says Elohim. There is no Elo so see there is no God beside me. I girded thee. To bind up, to gird up. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, the self existent eternal Jehovah, and there is none else. Okay, pay attention. I form the light and create darkness. Okay, let me give you a concept. Without darkness, you cannot perceive the light. Do you understand? So I create darkness and I form light. He forms light out of darkness. Now watch, because we become light beings that are formed out of the darkness that was created in Genesis 1. It's the exact same thing. It's perfect analogous. Watch, just watch. Okay, so I form light and create. So let's look at the word form. Okay, I'm going to click on I form the light. Yat Zar. Look at the word number 330. Say form Yat Zar. Say it. Yat Zar. Yat Zar. I form light as a potter. See right there? As a potter. Okay. I form the light. Illumination or see it? Or loom lighting, happiness, clearness, daylight. I form the light and create darkness. Bara. See, bara, look, darkness, the dark, death, destruction, sorrow, wickedness, obscurity. I So I form the light and create darkness. Ready? Quickly, let's go back to Genesis 1. And Elohim, so Elohim 
created bara, same as the darkness, created man. He's creating darkness. I bara. So Elohim created bara. Same word is I create darkness, bara, man in his own image. An idol, a phantom, an illusion. So here is the creation of a man that's darkness. Let's go to Genesis 2. When the Lord God, now here's the difference. And the Lord God formed man. So the Lord, the self-existent eternal Jehovah formed man. Look at this. Yatsar as a potter. He formed man from the dust. It's the clay right here. Okay, so, and he breathed into him the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Okay, now, now that you understand you're trapped in their system, let me show you how you get untrapped. This is the way you get untrapped. Isaiah 29. Uh, sorry, Isaiah 29. Where did Isaiah go? Isaiah 29 right there. Here you go. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, the self-existent eternal Jehovah. And their works are in the dark. See it? In the dark. And they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down. See it right there? I'm going to click on it. Turning of things upside down, exactly. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's yatsar clay. Back to Genesis 2. So here's where man be, and the Lord God formed man yatsar as a potter from the clay. Okay, so. You want to know you got your soul back, just like in Genesis 2, when the Lord God breathes into him the breath of life and man becomes, you got your soul back when you turn things the opposite direction and you can see. That's why Jesus said, I've come to restore the sight to the blind. Not everybody's walking around with a stick. You're spiritually blind and you're in a world that's total darkness. I mean, if you spent one day with me, you would freak out. <laughs> I'm just saying, most people would probably freak out um, because we're in a haunted house, really. It's ancient Egypt right in front of your face, just well disguised. So anyway, so there it is. Now, let's knock the rest of this stuff out of the park. So in the system that you got carried away captive to, because you're an angel. That's why, look, well, let me prove it. Watch. Remember Psalm 82? Watch. Remember Psalm 82? Okay, the Bible cannot be wrong on one point. Otherwise, it's all wrong. I have said ye are Elohim. There it is. See it? I have said ye are Elohim. All of you are children of El. Yon. El from the Most High. Okay, El. Yon. And it means the Supreme God, but it refers to a lofty uppermost part. El of the uppermost part. L of the uppermost part. L Yon. Okay? Now, the Bible says right there, You are gods. I have said ye are Elohim. And all of you are children. Look, children, a son is a builder in the widest sense. All of you are children of El Yon. Look at that. But you shall die like men. That's because. You have to be turned into a man because you're a god, but you chose to to take on flesh. You made your decision before you got here, but you shall die like men. I have said you're, you're Elohim, you're gods, but you're going to die like men. And look, fall. Look right here, fall. I'll do it. You shall fall. What's the word for fall? Na fall. See, like nephalim to fall to cast down to cast out see look cast down cast out cease die divide because you're a kingdom divided now see look cast down cast out cease die divide because now you've been cast down into the earth 
where you're a kingdom divided, you're up and down, you're light and dark, and you got to get converted to two lights instead of a light and a dark or an up and a down. Okay, now watch. That's why surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Okay, I have said to your gods, all of you are children of Elion, but you shall die like men and fall in the fall like one of the princes. So see, we're we're princes, rulers or stewards. So we were all rulers, stewards, captains, angels. There you go. Princes. There you go. You shall fall like one of the princes. And then it says, Arise, O Elohim, judge the earth. Now that's that's kind of like a curveball, right? It's like, wait a minute. Arise. Well, what happens when you get converted? Oh, you arise. And then the entire cumulative some group that get converted arise. See, because look, when your eye gets turned up, that's you arising. You become single-minded. Your eyes become single. Arise, O Elohim, judge the earth. We're judging all the angels that didn't get out. Because by virtue of the fact that you were converted, that judges all them. Don't you understand? Because they didn't. If they never took the free gift and got converted, then we're judging them. Arise, O Elohim, judge the earth. So we'll judge angels. Okay, so now let's go back to now. Now watch this. So that's Psalm 86, but watch, watch what Jesus says. So this is the Old Testament right here. Now, who said these words? I have said ye are gods. Well, whoever the psalmist is, but it's the Holy Spirit speaking through them. So the Holy Spirit said this. I have said ye are gods. All of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O Elohim, and judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. The ones that get saved are the ones that inherit all nations. Now watch. Let's go to John chapter 10. Okay. Verily I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way. See right here, some other way. I highlighted that because it's 237. That's why they use the word two, the number 237 in the movie The Shining. Right there. They use it right out of the Bible. That's why when he op don't open the door to room 237, what was it? It was some hot naked chick, but once he started, once he touched her, she turned to death. Uh, Genesis 3, neither shall you touch it lest you die. Lie with a woman. The word touch means lie with a woman. But let's go down here. Look what Jesus said right here. Look right here. So the Jews were going to stone Jesus. So then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. And then Jesus said, he answered them and said, Many good works have I shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? And the Jews said, so here all the writing in black is the Jews talking. The Jews answered him saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Blasphemy means vilification, uh, speaking evil. Okay, so for blasphemy. And they're saying, in the evil speaking that they're saying that Jesus was doing, they're saying, hey, you being a man makest thyself God. Isn't it funny? He's L. He's L, the almighty God that made himself a man. They're saying he's a man that's making himself a God. No. No, no, no. That's, uh, they got it backwards. He's El, the Almighty God, that made himself a man. And they're going, you're a man making yourself God. And look how Jesus responds to him. What? Jesus answered, is it not written in your law? So whose law is it? It's theirs. We're not under the law once we get saved. Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. Look right there. So I'm going to make it that bright blue color. Right there. So Jesus says, hey, y'all can't stone me because your own law says, I said, ye are gods. 
He was quoting Psalm 82 that I just showed you. I have said, ye are gods, you're all children of hell, but you're going to die like men because you made the choice to take on those bodies. That's how you got here. That's why there's a big snake building called the Vatican with all you guys melting into semen. That's the representation of all you guys. Elohim, the spirit of Elohim, moved over the semen. That's why they built an altar of it. Why do you think they made a big altar of a dead sheep with its tongue sticking out and a penis and a vagina and a seed ejaculating out of the penis? That's the serpent seed ejaculating into Eve starting the whole thing. What do you think that is? They worship the virgin. Can anyone argue with this? I didn't think so. I know they can't because this is from the almighty God. Okay, so Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? In Psalm 82, I said, you are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came. So, so he's even telling them, hey, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and they think they're all special, he's like, and the scriptures can't be broken. Look. And the scriptures cannot be broken. Then look what he says. Say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world. Thou blasphemest because I said I am the Son of God. And then he, he's like, well, how can you guys say I'm blaspheming when your own scriptures say I said you are God's? And they're trying to say, well, you're a man that makes yourself God. He's like, wait a minute. Your own scriptures say you're God's. And he goes, and you're saying I'm blaspheming because I was sanctified and sent into the world? And then he says, if I do the works of my father, then how can you argue with it? He does the works no other man does. So then also when the Lord sends me places, he has me lay hands on the blind. He has me lay hands on the sick. He chooses who I lay hands on. And the calling card shows up with the ministry. That's how you know. And that's why these people, oh, click some false prophet. No, you're bug food. Now, here we go. Let's keep going. So now you know for sure, right here, and I'll show you the altar. There's, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of, Let's see, maybe I can catch those faces on it. On the backs of their heads, there's faces going the opposite. There's the eye, there's the mouth, there's the eye right there. There's It's a reptile. It's a reptilian being facing the other way. So on all these little angels that are on the backs of their heads, on most of them that I was able to zero in on, I could find a face that was facing the opposite direction. And look what's down here at the bottom, reaching out their hands. Look, these are like full-grown women, look. So you're like full-grown woman. See, that's a female body. It's like saying to all the little boys, come down here, come down here, look. Look at what this is. It's female energy. It was the trap. Look at that. Pretty fascinating, isn't it? And then they're all melting into semen. I mean, this is phenomenal, man. This is just mind-boggling. I'm just going to click on one more picture. I, I, oh, that's the same one. Anyway, so that's a, represent, a representation of Genesis 1, verse 2. I'm just going to click on this one more time. Okay, there we go. Yeah, and if you look, uh, I like I look right here. Here's another face. There's the eye. There's the nose. There's the mouth. It's like a demonic face facing this direction that becomes the nose that becomes the open mouth and there's just yeah there's different there's an eye eye mouth so they have faces facing the opposite direction look at this face i colored it pink there's the eye there's the nose there's the mouth there's the chin see the eye right there looking that way there's the nose there's the mouth okay so as the part that turns the face and the the spirit of Elohim, there's Elohim, moved over the face, see, as the part that turns of the semen, and they're all melting into semen. That's why there is a penis and a vagina. I mean, it's a no-brainer. 
Where is it all in? It's all inside of a serpent. So Genesis 1 is the serpent race. I love you in Christ. But I just proved it. I just used their altar. I used their own altar to prove that that, that whole thing is Genesis 1 verse 2. Okay, now we're going to just, now watch this. Now, isn't it weird that this whole thing takes place, this whole altar takes place inside this snake right here? The whole thing is a dead sheep. The, ma the mouth of that snake is a penis. It's a vagina. So how does the serpent eat? Because of the flesh and what gets trapped in the flesh, which is your soul. And there is a female reproductive system there, the sheep upside down. But let me show you something really fascinating. Here's a picture of me right here. There's a picture Marcel drew of me. There is my eye, obviously my eyes, my nose, my mouth. But look right here behind my ear. He drew a, he drew a dead sheep. I walked into Starbucks and I said, I'll bet you a million dollars, Chris, that Alex draws a picture of me with a, a dead sheep on my face. <laughs> Maybe two. No, I was <laughs> just kidding. So anyway, Chris looked at me and said, what have you been smoking, man? I was like, I'm nothing. I'll bet you a million dollars Alex draws a picture of me with a dead sheep on my face. There it is. How would I know that? Because he'd always go, hey, Johnny, how you doing? He'd wink his eye and stick out of his tongue. When you wink your eye, that's uh, Psalm 35, 19. Neither let them that are my enemies wrongfully rejoice over me, Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. He was, that's quoting Psalm 35, 19, uh, reiterating John 15. When Jesus said, my enemies, they bring into pass what is written in their law. They hated me without cause. So if someone winks their eye at you, that's the angel of the bombless pit looking right at you. So he would always wink his eye and then stick out his tongue. Well, what's the sheep doing? Sticking out his tongue. Isaiah 57, verse 4. Uh, it says, against whom do you sport yourself and stick out your tongue? Who are you making fun of and sticking out your tongue? Are you not children of transgression, the seed of the adulterer and the whore? Okay, so that's the serpent race. So if someone's going, hey, hey, Johnny, well, the Vatican's a serpent. What's the Vatican eating? A sheep with its tongue sticking out. So when some dude keeps going, hey, man, how you doing? I know he's the serpent race because I got one eye from the pit looking right at me and the tongue coming out of the mouth because they're the serpent race. It says it in the Bible. It's like, and so anyway, I walked in there a week and a half later and here's the picture Alex drew of me. He goes, hey, I drew it. By the way, there's a serpent eating that sheep, which is the same thing as the Vatican. The Vatican is a serpent right here and the mouth of the serpent is a sheep. And he's eating the sheep. Here's a picture of me. And there's the sheep. And there's a serpent eating that sheep. And when I said, hey, Alex, let me ask you a question. Why'd you put a dead sheep on my face? He went, do you know who you're speaking with? <laughs> yeah, and the angel of the bombless pit. Do you know who you're speaking with? I'm a servant of the Most High. You're in deep, deep trouble. Okay, so here we go. Here's Grand Junction, Colorado. When I went to go get the shipping containers, do you see the sheep with the serpent wrapped around him? That's really a guy hugging a girl. It, the whole statue is a guy hugging a girl. But hidden on the back of the hair of one of the, uh, of the girl or the guy, whatever, is a sheep. And then their arms turn into a serpent, which is, let us create man in our image. So male and female created him. Uh, in the image of Elohim created he, him, male and female created he, them. And the whole male-female system is a serpent eating a sheep race. The serpent race in Genesis 1, the sheep race in Genesis 2, they bred together and the cannibalization goes from inside because it's a spiritual consummation. Your soul is consumed by insects from the pit. Yeah, I can prove it all day long now. That's why the largest altar, that dead sheep, that whole dead sheep thing becomes this. So when you when we simply go back from the window, this window right here, that's the sheep, and I'll just drag it down with me. 
So I'll take the sheep right here with me. And then that window right here, that's the sheep. So that's, look, right in the mouth of the bug. So the window that's the sheep, I put right here. Well, what's the sheep made out of? A penis and a vagina. So what's going in the mouth of this big bug? Uh, a penis. So what does that mean that, what is that bug harvesting? That bug is harvesting semen. What's in semen? The spark of life, the souls that came into the system. Who's Satan? The, did, so, so Satan, y'all you know who Satan is? That old dragon called the serpent and Satan and the devil. Revelation 12, right? So let's go to Revelation 12. And that gray dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Okay, well, right there, you see the word serpent? That's what the Vatican is. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Well, let's go to Revelation 9. And it's talking about the, the locust from the pit. And the locusts from the pit had tails like unto scorpions, and the stings were in their tails, and they had a king over them. The locusts from the pit have a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is Apollyon. Apollyon is Satan right there. So the king of the bugs, of the insects from the pit is Satan. I just proved it. Satan is, look. They had a king over them. Who had a king over them? The locusts. The locusts right there. And the shapes of the locusts were like horses prepared unto battle. And they had hair like women and faces like men and teeth like lion. And they had tails like unto scorpions. And they had a king over them. They had a king over them. The locusts with tails like scorpions. And his name is Apollyon, which is Satan right there. A destroyer. Satan. So... Then, if we're in a building that's a big snake, we're in a building right here called the Vatican that's a big snake wearing a crown, and in the mouth of that snake is a penis and a vagina, and that just happens to be what Genesis 1 says, let us make man in our vain show. So Elohim created man in his own vain show. In the image of Elohim created he him, penis and vagina created he them. Male and female, penis and vagina created he them. So why is all this inside of a damn snake? Because it's true. Well, who's the serpent? Well, it says right there in Revelation 12, that great dragon, the serpent called the devil and Satan. Well, who's Satan? He's the king of the bugs. No wonder they built an altar of a big bug harvesting semen. Because the mystery of all mysteries is you take an angel, you trap it in a host body right here, and see with the big chain on his neck, and then you see the twin right here, you see the fetus right here with the umbilical cord and the fetus with the umbilical cord, that's you, you're in a twin system, and when you get inverted, you become a bug because that's what comes out of the pit. What comes out of the pit? All the souls that have been gobbled up since the beginning of the world. What have they been converted into? Bugs. Satan is the king of the freaking insects. Did I prove my point? See, I can show it to you. This is in the Vatican. This is the list of popes right here. This is the list of popes. See, look, right here. You see that picture I just slid? That's a list of popes. So... He's the mouthpiece for Satan. There's no way out of it. He is the mouthpiece for Satan. Who's Satan? The king of the bugs. Why do you think he stands in front of a big bug and gives his sermons? He's, I mean, come on. It's a no-brainer. So he stands right here and talks. It's a big insect. Because Satan's the king of the locusts from the pit. That's what your soul is used for. L, the Almighty God, is, I mean, do you think L, the Almighty God, is going to create man and woman in his vain show? Is he going to make uh, an altar to a penis and a vagina? No, Elohim would, though, because that's what they started. It's a no-brainer. <laughs> it's like, come on, guys. You see it? Here's a guy with a tattoo of the same exact thing. 
when you rotate the tattoo sideways, you see the sheep right here? See it? See the sheep right here? That's really an angel kissing a woman. Rotate it 90, uh, 90 degrees to the left, and it's an angel kissing a woman, but it's a dead sheep. Get it? Male and female. Don't touch it. It kills a sheep. There you go. Okay. Now, let's go back to our special projects folders and let me show you John. Okay, now, let me show you guys just how important it is to know. 1 Corinthians 15. Let me show you who Jesus is. And then, remember, and this is eternal life. What? What's eternal life? That's a pretty important one to know. And this is eternal life. This is life eternal. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 before we get to this is life eternal. Okay, so the natural body is, okay, it is sown in a natural body, Genesis 1. It is raised in a spiritual body. That's, there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Think of the natural body as Genesis 1, and there is a spiritual body. Think of that as Genesis 2. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Okay, right here. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. So it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Adam, and the last Adam, was a quickening spirit. Well, Jesus was the first and the last. Watch. The first man, Adam, that's capital A. Look, Hebrew word 121. Adam, the first man of Jesus. Man is his representative. So the first man, Adam, the one that got a living soul, was Jesus' representative. And I'll prove it. Watch this. So, when the Lord God formed man from the dust, he breathed into him the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Genesis 2, verse 7. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, 45. And the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. That's Jesus' man that's in the system. He made him a living soul. And it says right here in Adam, the first man of Jesus, man, as his representative. So let's go to John. So you can, John chapter 3. I'm sorry, Gospel of John, chapter 3. John 3. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God, because first you get to see it when you're born again. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born of water and the Spirit, right here, capital S, capital S, Numa, it means superhuman, an angel, demon. That's what happens when you mix Genesis 1 with Genesis 2. You get superhuman, angel, demon. So that's a normal spirit, but you got to be born again from that divine God, Christ, Holy Spirit. So you get converted from a superhuman angel demon into divine God, Christ, Holy Spirit. And I'll show you that in Ephesians 2 because that's why I always clap my hands. And you he hath quickened. What did it say? The last Adam was a quickening spirit. And Jesus is that quickening spirit. So here it is. And you he hath quickened. And uh, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. So who quickened you? Jesus. You as quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sins. Where in the time past you walked according to the course of this world, the entire world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit. Look right there. I'm going to do it a light a lighter color green. The spirit, it's the same word, a current of air, but it's it's lowercase. I'll do the 
I'll do that S in yellow. See lowercase? Spirit, superhuman angel, demon. So I'll make it the same color. Let's make it. Let's make it. Let's make it the same color. Let's make it the green. There you go. So see, spirit, superhuman, and angel, demon. Okay, so when you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience, whom among in the past times, fulfilling the lusts and the desires of the flesh. By nature, you were children of wrath. But God, who is rich in mercy, for with the great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, he has quickened us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. Okay. Now, one more thing is Jesus' identity. So now let's go right back. So John 3, John chapter 3, watch this. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto thee, except the man be born again of water and the Spirit, Numa, divine God, Christ. So you go from a superhuman angel demon, you go from that, then you get born again, and that that demon, ready? See, you're an angel and a demon, but when you get born again, that demon gets inverted and the two become one. So your eyes become single, the demon gets flipped, it cuts the line of the pit, that worm that's feeding off you your whole life that's just waiting for you to die so we can have the rest of you, he gets, that's it, he's done. No more worm feeding off you. I'll restore to you the years the canker worm has eaten because every year, every year of your life, you're being eaten from the inside. So there it is. So Jesus said, except you be born of the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Now here it is. Here's Jesus. Here's how you know who he is. Ready? 24, 24. I'm going to make this the blue color. Nope. I'm going to make it blue. Because it goes with El, the Almighty God, and the self-existing eternal Jehovah. Okay, so Jesus is 2424 Easus. Ready? See it? 2424. Let me uh, highlight that the same colors. There you go. So there it is. Jesus, right here. Ready? Yeho Shua. Say it. Uh, wait. I got to get that part the right color. See, Yeho Shua. It's not Yeshua. It's Yeho Shua. See it? Okay, well, see the Yeho part right here? J E H O. J E H O is from this 3068. The self existent eternal Jehovah. That's what Yeho is. The self existent eternal Jehovah. And the Shua part is from Yasha to open, to set free. Okay, so who is Jesus? Let's go back and do it again. He's he's Yehoshua, see, Yehoshua. And it's from this Hebrew word right here, 3091, Yehoshua. And it's the self-existent eternal Jehovah that saves. See it right here? So who's Jesus? The self-existent eternal Jehovah that saves. Oh, wow. Let's go back to Isaiah. Let's go back to Isaiah. Is it 2? Isaiah 12, I think. Hang on. Isaiah 12. Behold, L is my salvation. Yeshua. L is my deliverance. L is my help, my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Yah, the sacred name of the Lord most vehement, Jehovah, self-existent, eternal Jehovah is my Yeshua. D 
Do you see how it all fits perfectly? The self-existent eternal Jehovah that breathed into Adam, he, that's Jesus' guy in the system. And the two form together. Okay, now, you ready? And this is life eternal. Ready? Okay, so here it is. Now, this is what the Lord showed me on my trip when he told me to open the bedside drawer in the hotel room. It said, I have finished the work thou hast given me to do. And the Lord was letting me know I finished what I needed to do. And this is life eternal. Everybody pay attention. See it? And this is life eternal. Forever eternal. See it? Uh, I'll go like this. I'll make it yellow. And this is life eternal. That they might know. Look at this. Know. He knows go. See that word? To know absolutely that they might know thee, the only true God. I'm going to change that color. The only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. The only true. It means truthful, true as not concealing. You see it? True as in not concealing. Because the earth, the system that you're in, has concealed the truth by inverting it. That's how you know you're saved. Because you inverted the world and you're like, oh my God, I'm in a prison. Then you're no longer afraid of death. Because you know, oh my gosh, this place is death. Oh, whoever tries to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find true life and have eternal life. Proven. So that you might know the one true God. How do you know the one true God? You invert everything. Why do you think the vir the virgin's a dead sheep? Now let's go to the folders. And then let me show you. You know what? Okay, this is what's coming right now. And I think I'll save this for the next video. Um I'm gonna this is this is this will be the next video. When y'all see what the Lord revealed to me. Okay, this is a band called Cannibal Corpse. And I saw this the other day and I said, you know, Corey, they got it exactly right. The hose body is nothing more than a, a suit of skin that bursts locusts from the pit. That's all it really is. It's the forbidden fruit. Neither shall you touch it lest you die. Uh, angels that participated in making the host body system. And a lot of people, oh, no, only God can do it. Well, God, may, God creates a darkness and he forms the light. Okay, so let me show you very quickly. Let's see. Uh, hang on one sec. Okay, so on my next video, I'm just going to give you a little preview real quick. Um, the Lord just dumped some heavy information on me. But there's a, there's a band called Cannibal Corpse. See it? Cannibal Corpse. Now remember, what's the name of the first two twins? Cain and Abel, because see, inside of you, it's a cannibalistic system. Inside of you is a cannibalistic system. Why do you think there's a band called the Fine Young Cannibals? Really? I mean, they like they don't know. I mean, so anyway, so Cannibal Corpse, it says vile. And then you see all these maggots coming out of this corpse body, and it says vile right there. It says vile right there. Let me take you to the Bible. It says... For our conversation is in heaven from whence we also look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body. Vile. Hum humiliation be made low. Low estate. See, if you think your body is some wonderful deal, who shall change our vile body. Say it right there. Vile. And then body. And watch this. Vile body. 
slave right there see it vile body slave that it may be fashioned into like the glorious body according to according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself so see if you think genesis 1 was making some wonderful body for you it says jesus will change our vile bodies vile bodies okay you know what i'm just going to do a very a very brief lead into watch this okay so you see that this is a right side up triangle and an upside down triangle makes an x and this also makes the way they did his stomach and it ripping open it's a vagina those are labia he made that because they're showing from the beginning that's what this is going to produce and then you know you got male and then female and in the end of the world this is the production of it let me show you just how profound this is so what was the largest altar in the world it's a dead sheep and when you get back from it the whole thing's an insect harvesting semen from male and female reproductive systems that's what it is that's why the whole ceiling is a it looks just like a beehive right above it why do you think the whole ceiling above it is a beehive because it's all true now largest altar in the world is a dead sheep but it's also an insect harvesting the sheep and then in the form of semen male and re female reproductive systems okay well look at this come, isaiah 119 come now let us reason together saith the lord i'm going to highlight it hopefully that's blue yep the self-existent eternal jehovah though your sins be as scarlet i'll make that kind of a pink color though your sins be as scarlet crimson properly the color of the insect though your sins be the color of the insect they shall be white as snow. Though they be red, look at the word red. It's the same root as Adam. Though they be red. See it? Adam. Adam. Though they be red. Though your sins be red. Like, ready? Like crimson. Ready? A maggot. As voracious. I told you we were being eaten, right? How long have I been telling you that? A maggot, specifically often with the ellipsis of a the crimson grub. Uh-huh. There you go. A maggot. Okay, let's go back to Cannibal Corpse. Our vile bodies. See, they know. They're making fun of us. See, vile. See all the maggots coming out of the body? It's male and female, right side up triangle, right side up triangle, upside down triangle. There's maggots coming out of it because the end of the road of the host body. And look at look at the corpse. It's in it's it's being held with barbed wire, the whole thing, because you're in a prison. Your your host body is a vile body. It says it right there in scripture. Now let me show you what's coming, guys. This is a new pair of boxer shorts from a from lurking class. And the reason they did them like this is represents the female. Like they made this on these are guys' boxer shorts. And what's coming out is death. And all you gotta do is turn it upside down. Now, this is lurking class right here. This is death, you know, wearing um, you know, like uh the Grim Reaper. And when you turn it upside down, it's really a bug hatching. See, the eye, the eye, they put them out there. It's like this, like gray alien type thing. It's like insect race. It's hatching from this. It's hatching. But now they have the boxers. They just had them come out. And this is an insect wearing a crown. I'll just slide this over right here. And it's coming out of the pit. And they're saying the pit's about to open. It's the same as Cannibal Corpse. So Cannibal, this band, let me let me show you something. Watch this. 
Google Images. Let's see. Cannibal Corpse. Okay, so this is the band Cannibal Corpse. And I'm telling you, these guys, hey, look. There's Mickey Minaj. If you click on this, it'll tell you something absolutely disgusting about Mickey Nicki Minaj and what she's doing with these guys. Cher, I've seen their Cher, Cher uh, talking to Cannibal Corpse and their discussion. And you go through this and you just see what's on these guys' album covers. And let me assure you, I just proved using the Bible that they, they are in tune. These guys are totally in tune. They work for the angel of the bottomless pit. They know that your body is nothing more than a vile corpse to get the insects out of the pit. Why do you think the largest church in the world is a freaking snake? It's a snake. It's that a snake is Satan. Satan is the, the serpent, the dragon, the serpent wearing the crown because they got God's angels trapped in those bodies. And now the Lord has let me prove it using all the word. El is the almighty God. Elohim started the system. El came in to save his children. He came in in Genesis 2, uh, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, breathed into them the breath of life. Man became a living soul. All the angels that were destined to come in came in over the history of the world from the consummation of Adam and Eve. Eve was taken from his side, just like a representation of the original group leaving heaven and starting the system. She fell. She was seduced. Then she gave it to Adam. He he fell. There was a commingling of both races, male and female. And we ended up here in a host body system that's duplicitous. You got a twin system in your head. You got a twin system in your spirit. Superhuman angel demon. The Lord let me prove it. Then you get converted to the Holy Spirit. The two become one and you're free to go. And you know the Almighty God. You know because you've been inverted. That's the only way you know for sure. Because you got inverted. Go, what's that Beatles song? You were inverted, you were perverted to, you know, that song. Go, let's go listen to the lyrics. The Beatles, Bugs. Yeah. The Rolling Stones. Get it? The Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones. It's no brainer. It's not even a, it's not even open for discussion. Anyway, all glory to God. Okay, I'll go over some more of this uh, stuff, like the insect thing, on the next video. By the way, uh, a young lady that was in Grand Junction sent me a really phenomenal confirmation. Uh, she had sent me as, and I don't have it here. It's out in my car. I just picked it up. A, the same statue that I saw on the way to Grand Junction, she was led to send me one um, before I showed you all that video. And she sent me the exact same statue as I saw on the way to Grand Junction. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> anyway, I was like, uh, anyway, I'll get her, I'll get her note and I'll try and read it on the next video um, anyway and show you guys. But yeah, the king's coming, guys. I mean, the mystery of everything's been solved. Y'all understand that, right? There's a good you and there is a bad you. Good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the knowledge in your head, good, in your head, evil. And you got everything you've done in the flesh, you got to repent and you get made one in Christ. He takes the fall for all your sins. Now you know who he is. He turns the world upside down. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you in Christ, guys. I love you so much. You are my joy. And I mean, here's a real hug from Johnny. Oh, I love you guys. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be okay. Don't be scared, cheap. I mean, you know. The Lord sent me to stand in front of the bully for you. I'm sick of bullies. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Hang on one sec. Let me see if I can find it.
Hey, you know what? Y'all are going to freak out. Remember I told you nephal. Nephal means fallen. Im, I am, means fallen ones. Nephalim, fallen ones. All right, well, watch this. Let me show you something crazy. Okay, so in, let's see, in Numbers, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched out under the children of Israel, saying, the land which thou have gone into to search it, it is eaten up the inhabit it, it eateth up the inhabitants thereof. I mean, that's just like all of us that come to the earth. And all the people that we saw are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the with the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Okay, well, watch this. Numbers 33. Okay, ready? Check this out. Numbers Deuteronomy. Here we go. Numbers 33. I just want to make sure. Number Numbers 13. Numbers 13. Okay, now, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched the children. Like, look at Israel. Everybody pay attention. Israel, even Israel. Look, Yisra, see Yisra, L. Going to make it always blue. Yisra, L, E, L. Okay, I'll make this yellow. I'm, wait, I'll make this blue. Yisrael. Okay, so it means he will rule as El, the Almighty God. So the whole world is about the Lord God usurping it, taking over it. So look, he will rule as El, the Almighty God. Yisra means to prevail. And that's what's happening right now. We're prevailing. Look, to prevail, okay, as a prince. So if you if you got inverted and you've been made ones, you prevailed. You became you became Yisrael to prevail as El inside of you. Do you get it? We are the new Israel. We are the new Jerusalem city of peace because we're at peace now. Do you get it? There's no building that everyone thinks, oh, the third temple. Where are the temple? And we're all being built up as stones into that temple. <laughs> yeah, now ready? Watch this. Ready? Look at this. So, when they brought the report for the children of Israel, saying the land in which we have gone to search it, it eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Just think of the earth. This is just amazing. And all the people that we saw were men of great stature. It means like to be wearing big suits, garments. I mean, think about that. And we saw the giants, the sons of Anak. Look at this. The giants. Bully or tyrants. Uh, bullies. Get it? And their offspring are bullies. See, a bully. Isn't that crazy? And I, uh, this is the first time I've ever seen that. And the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, the bullies. See, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight, grasshoppers, a locust, so that we were in their sight. <laughs> so then we'll go over all the data in the next video and I'll I'll show you um the young lady that sent me the statue that's identical to the one on the trip. The king's coming. All right guys, big hugs from Johnny again. <sighs> I love you guys. <laughs> All right, there it is. The scriptures are perfect. So, 
Who's Genesis 1? Is that El, the Almighty God? It's a yes or no. No, it's not. Did did the Almighty God create Elohim? Yes, he did. It's exactly what I've been saying. He creates a darkness and he forms a light. Without darkness, you can't form the light out of it. I mean, it's, a, it's pretty big stuff. All right, guys. I love you in Christ. I hope you enjoyed the teaching. It's straight from the Lord. Um, and again, do not turn into a strong concordance freak. Don't do it. I see people go off the rails. Uh, people start going, oh, this receipt, that receipt. Listen, everything I do, I'm led by the Spirit of the Lord God to do. Do you understand? He's placed before me an open door the night I got saved. And so it it works very differently. I mean, it's not that you're not supposed to know this stuff. What do you think I'm here for? But please don't appoint yourself as a teacher. It'll It'll be disastrous. I guarantee it. Don't do it. Okay. I love you in Christ. All right. Take care, guys.